careful about what you're emulating. Anything you want to add before we get any further into the next bullet point, Stephanie? No. Other okay. than, well, and I'm going to say it again. I think you've already said it twice. When you're in a uh, in a relationship with us and you hire Kevin and I, we are your board of advisors, your board of directors, been there, done that, have a great business acumen, great business background. We think like business people. And um, we dig down and drill down deep with each one of our clients about what's going on in your market so we can help you put together this business plan for you based on, so I see some new people on, on this morning, we help people put together based on their specific target market. In other words, if you're in Alaska versus Florida, you might have a different market. You might be on the East Coast versus the West Coast, and call arounds are doing really well for you. Our clients each have maybe four or five different sources of business. I bet you 50% of them are all the same, with some exceptions. Is FISBO a good market for you? Yes or no? Expired? So you know. Old expires with drawn cancel. Maybe. Sphere of influence. Yeah, not so much. Okay, well let's work on that. So we for each one of you, because you're gonna do some homework for me based on sourcing your business from this year to see where you were succeeding at. And we're gonna actually measure return on investment. Imagine that in the business. Measuring your ROI based on your target markets. And we are not gonna throw shiny objects at you as a business source. So I'm just, I cannot reiterate this enough, especially for those who have been with us for a while, because I'd say at least half of our portfolio, our portfolio, has been with us for more than a year. Just, we're going to take a good, hard, serious look with each one of you that are in mastery. And for those of you that are joining us, that I see are slightly strangers who have come and joined us today. We can help you with this, get really, really, really specific. And it's not because you have the coolest CRM follow-up boss or infusion, confusion software, any of that nonsense. It's these five sources of business drilled down with a strategy for each. That makes sense, doesn't it, Kevin? Well, absolutely. And it's just like with a professional athletics team, they yeah. focus on a set of core activities and fundamentals. And one of the reasons the coaching staff is there is to keep people on track. Because mm -hmm. as humans, we're attracted to shiny objects. We're attracted to things. Now imagine an NFL team if they were winging it every week. And they didn't adjust their strategy. The, the equivalent of what they do is they watch film and they practice basics. And then they adjust what they're going to do based on their opponent. You need to make those adjustments based on your market and your sources of business. And it changes, like the teams change weekly in the NFL, your market could change over time. So part of the, what we do is we try and keep, and we ask questions. Some of the questions that our coaching clients or agents that we've trained don't expect us to ask is, what are you doing that we don't know about? Yeah. What are you spending your time looking at or spending money on? And we find some interesting things. Because human nature is such that, left our own devices, we tend to trend towards doing the wrong things. Because it's not sexy, it's, not, it's, it's away from the more monotonous activity. So just be aware of that. It's not you that you're a bad person. Believe me, one of the reasons we're so passionate about this is that we did this again and again and again, mostly because of the system we were in and the fact that they serve this up like a Chinese menu. And human nature is such that you're going to keep trying it. So how do you stay on track? You stay on track by setting a minimum number of contacts, appointments, and listings taken. And you're going to keep score. In other words, you're going to know what your performance is based on you're going to know what's appropriate and have some targets for each of the sources of business. And the reason the word listing's in there and not buyers, you'll have plenty of buyer business, especially if you focus on the right type of listings where people want to sell out property and then buy something. And then track it. It's very difficult to have a buyer-based business and run a successful business where you can do what we're talking about, and we'll touch on the number of hours, days, and income targets that many of our clients have. Identify the day and time for each of your sources. Put prospecting and follow-up days and times on your schedule. Follow a schedule. When we <laughs> sold, sorry, that came out of my mouth. <laughs> well, when we when we sold a professional hockey player a home in St. Louis, we had to arrange the entire transaction 
all the inspections, everything else going on, meeting him to sign things around practice. They were practicing that much that all of it was related to how we did this. And you compare that to how real estate agents handle their practice. And you run your business. So one of the things that you can do to get yourself on track is to absolutely get these monotonous activities on your schedule. Now tracking your activity, keeping score, you either know that you're on track and you know what your indicators are, or you don't. Most agents are disconnected from what their success is. It's a stream of activity and chaos. And at the end of the month or quarter or year, they look back and go, wow, I made a decent amount of money. Here's the reality, and I hate to burst anybody's bubble. This business is reasonably stupid simple mm -hmm. that you could be way off track, not making the appropriate adjustments. At the end of the year, much like a car that's ready to go into the shop and be torn apart, your personal life, your financial affairs, and everything else can be way off track. We're talking about having a profitable business that you're not working seven days a week that you're able to actually do. And it's from these fundamentals, tracking your activity, being focused on a certain set of sources of business, and knowing how you're doing it. You can do this in a highly chaotic basis. Believe me, one of the reasons we know this is we did. We started out working because it was Stephanie and me, uh, no kids at home, and all we did was work. We worked day and night and sometimes seven days a week, and we, we were off track chasing shiny objects and doing all sorts of projects and other things. And in some cases, it gets to the point where it compromises your health. It may compromise relationships with your spouse. Don't be that agent that does that. You might be getting awards and accolades at your office, but if you're not on track and you're not following a schedule and you're not focused on a set of businesses that are in certain sources, you're not going to have a good life. It's a little different message than you're going to hear from a lot of other people. And doing an awesome job on disqualifying, if, you're, if you have not taken listing mastery, you'll see that we spend most of our time on the key focus on disqualifying. If you know their motivation and their timing, and you know and you're a market expert, which is the next bullet point, you're going to be so much further ahead. You want your competitors, as I talk about in Listing Mastery, to get all of the worst listings and prospects. The seller that's a jerk, that won't price it right, you want your most able competitor to get that listing. He or she will not be able to take the next eight to 10 listings because they're going to be so wrapped around the axle with that.